guys, and welcome back to another CAFCast. Today we're carrying on with our Dogecoin series. We're going to be doing something a little bit different though. We're not going to be doing the tips and uh, gambling video today. This is an update for the mining video that we did, which has become so popular. Thanks to everybody who's watched the original so far. And if you haven't, I strongly recommend going to watch that first before this video, um, because that's going to cover a lot of the basic stuff before we uh, move on to some of the, the more advanced things that I'm going to be discussing in this video. I said when I actually made the videos themselves that I would be keeping them up to date with the latest information and now that there has been a new update to CUDA Miner which has again improved performance by sort of 10 to 15 percent I thought it was a good idea to make a video for you guys. Using the configuration that I've got for my GTX 780, I've managed to get around about 600 kilo hashes per second now. So NVIDIA is getting pushed up and up slowly but surely. Um, ATI still obviously are outperforming us in terms of kilo hashes per power watt consumption. But for anybody out there who has an NVIDIA graphics card or just prefers NVIDIA, then uh, this is the video for you. But do make sure you've watched the first one. So to start off with, as you guys can see, we've still got the December 18th version of CUDA Miner installed on this computer. Uh, I wanted to do everything with you guys. Um, and also I've added a little kind of uh, feature for where I click on the mouse. Uh, if that is useful, let me know. If not, I'll, uh, I'll turn it off because it's just really to help you guys visualize what I'm doing. So if we go into uh, Google Chrome here and we do the same thing as we always do, head over to the CUDA Miner uh, conversation on Bitcoin Talk. That's where everything is kept these days. Uh, this is the new version. Now, it looks like there's actually been a, an even more uh, updated version that's been released here. So we've got a se uh, 7th of February, so that was yesterday, uh, with a stratum fix for MaxCoin. Uh, and then again for MaxCoin launch, they've got so they've got two separate versions for other coins, which you might be interested in. And if you're watching this video to try to learn how to mine a script in general, and the script you're looking for is MaxCoin, then those are going to be the launches for you. But for us working on Dogecoin, we only need to worry about the uh, 2014 February the fourth version. That's what we need to run. So if we click that to download it, it'll take us over to the Mega website where the files are kept from the Bitcoin Talk website. So we'll get that going. And hopefully it won't take too long, so I can have to keep you guys for too long. Uh, but whilst that's happening, one thing to, to bear in mind uh, that I need to talk to you guys about anyway, so I suppose we can do that now. Um, one thing to bear in mind is that any of the original uh, configuration files that you guys have set up, um, for your copies of CUDA Miner before, <clears throat> if you're coming from an older version of CUDA Miner to this newer version now, um, you need to make sure that you don't use the old configuration files. The old configuration files for me um, didn't work at all. They did a CPU could not validate, and I will show you that once the new version has been downloaded. Um, but for a lot of people, they're showing actually a decrease in performance. There's a lot of configurations that we need to go through, which I will do in this video. So for now, I guess because it's going to take quite a while, we'll wait for that to download and I'll be right back with you guys. Okay, now we're back. Kido Miner just downloaded itself. Um, took a little bit of a while. I think the server load might be a little bit high in the uh, at the moment. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but anyway, we've got that now so we can close that window down. Uh, the best thing to probably do if you are looking for configuration files like I was talking to you about before is to go through this thread. It's actually a really useful uh, conversation that's going on. There's a lot of talk about um, Script J and some more advanced cryptocurrencies. Uh, I say advanced, I mean more sort of like power hungry and consuming. Um, but for those who are watching this video for Dogecoin or for Litecoin or any of those sort of uh, cryptocurrencies, then you don't need to worry about that. Um, but there is some good conversation about sort of configuration files and things that you can go through. But anyway, the best thing for us to do now is to extract our CUDA miner we've got here. I'm sure you guys have your own uh, software, but um, WinRAR tends to be the best for me anyway. <laughs> um, so we open that file up. And uh, same as before, we've got a few uh, bits and pieces. They're, they're pretty much exactly the same as you guys can see here. Um, you've got the SRC, the license and readme. The only thing that we're really interested in is the X64 
uh, section because that's the same as what we were using last time. Um, obviously, we uh, we have the uh, the bat file which we um, which we need to use to to set up the configuration. Um, but obviously, we can do that with uh, by taking the old one and uh, and dragging it across. So. What I'll do is I will take this file across directly. Um, this is actually not a pre-configured file. This is a um, one that still sets up configuration for an auto-tune. Now, for those of you guys who don't really understand what all that means, if you go into the readme file that's actually in the uh, 2014, uh, February the 4th, so it's the latest version, um, you can find out a lot about the configurations that you uh, that you need to run through here. So it explains to you that um, if I open up the stress test file that we made in the last video, you can see here that I've got these predefined things, and we did talk about them last time, but I'll just go through it real, real quick with you guys. Lowercase d, uh, as you guys can see here, is for devices. It gives a comma separated list of Q device IDs to operate on. Device IDs start counting from zero. What I've actually done with my system, because I'm running on Haswell and the integrated graphics card on the uh, CPU is good enough to uh, to do most tasks uh, and play most kind of light games that I that I tend to play these days. Um, I'm actually running my 780 exclusively without anything plugged into it. Uh, the way that I managed to achieve this was to set the graphics card to um, be on, even if nothing's plugged into it, in the BIOS of my uh, motherboard. Your results may vary, but it has mean, meant that I can do a couple of things, which I'll talk to you guys about a little later on. Um, but the D0 for us here it actually chooses my GTX 780, so chances are, if you're running one uh, graphics card on your PCI, even if you're using your monitor on your integrated graphics card, it will still be D0. H is the hash parallel, as you guys can see here. Um, the best thing to do with that is to run it on one. Um, I found that to be the most efficient because it enables multi-threaded hashing on the CPU. It doesn't just dump everything on the GPU. So your CUDA cores can uh, spend time doing what they need to do and actually hash rather than have to worry about the parallels. Um, We've also got i equals 1. Uh, now, that one is the interactive mode. This is the one that I suggest for anybody who's still running uh, on their main graphics card and wants to still be able to use their computer. Uh, 1 is what you need to use. If you're running like me with your graphics card actually not doing anything apart from mining exclusively, or if you're running a second graphics card and your second graphics card you are telling to mine exclusively, then you want to run I0 because that means that the computer will recognize. Oh, not sure what that is, but let's close that. Um, if you guys are uh, are looking to uh, to run as as basically as balls to the walls fast as you possibly can on your graphics card, then I0 is what you want to do. If your computer only has one graphics card and that's also powering your monitor, then one is what you need to use. The final configuration that you need to worry about is the launch configuration. Um, now, the best thing to do for this is to actually go back to the website and find out what, uh, what you need to run. Uh, in terms of your uh, launch configuration. Now, the new version of CUDA Miner is actually really, really good. Uh, for auto-tuning your graphics card. So chances are, if you just want to get it running, the best thing to do is just have this set up. So choose D0 if your graphics card is in the zero position. If it's not, you'll probably know about it. So if just if all else fails, D0. H1 for your hash parallel, I1 for your interactive mode so you can keep using the card. Otherwise, again, you'll know about it and you'll put I0. And then L Auto. That's the best way of running that. O is for your stratum, U is for your username, and P is for your password. If you run that configuration, it will automatically detect everything for you uh, and uh, and hopefully run normally. What we'll do is we'll actually run that, <coughs> excuse me, and we will find out whether or not that's going to uh, configure properly. Uh, properly, it should do. Uh, so here we go. So the graphics card itself um, has uh, been detected on device zero, as you guys can see here. Uh, it tells you a couple of bits of information about the card itself, and it starts to perform an auto-tune. Now, 
as we discussed in the last video as well, you can do some overclocking, but it really isn't necessary unless you really know what you're doing. Um, and if you do know what you're doing, then there's no point in me going over it in, in too much detail. Um, but the, I find that the best thing to bear in mind is that you want to keep your front side bus usage at around about 80%. Anything lower and your hash rate suffers, and anything higher, you don't get an increase in hash rate for, but you do get an increase in, in uh, voltage. So that's kind of pointless, really, because you're just using more power to get the same amount of uh, hashes. So, uh, yeah, I strongly recommend against that. Um, and also, the uh, important thing to do is to make sure that your fans are kicking in as well. If you guys are finding this all a bit too complicated, don't worry, there's going to be a CUDA Manager tutorial video going up very shortly. CUDA Manager is a piece of software that will uh, configure these things for you automatically. Um, so if you're not uh, au fait with computers and you'd rather just sort of get a chance to, to offload all the details and the, and the configuration and stuff to a, uh, to a piece of software, then I'll show you guys how to do that in another video. So keep yourselves tuned in on the CAFCast and don't forget to subscribe subscribe so you're the first to know about that video. So just to finish off on the video today we're going to just quickly go through to the Google Docs spreadsheet here. Now this is the best place to go for your specific configurations and this is actually what I'm running to be able to get my graphics card to run at the 600 kilo hashes. I'm sure you guys can remember when I first started these videos on the uh, the mining system we were running around about I think it was 460 or 450 something like that to get a 150 kilo hash increase in less than a month on the same card is absolutely crazy. At least I think so anyway. So the, what you can do is you can go through to find it, find your cards and then check to find out whether or not your system uh, matches up to what they've got here. So for example, I'm running 64-bit version of Windows 7. I'm not running the EVGA classified um, overclocked card. I'm running the, the Zeus one, but I am running a soft overclock myself. They're able to achieve a 650 hash rate on the 214.0202 which is the same as the 0402 that we're running uh, and you guys can see that it has all the information in here that you need to worry about so we have the driver version we have the gpu core clock offset we have the memory clock offset and everything so you can see here as, as i said to you guys before most people are lowering their memory clock um, to keep the front side bus around 80 percent which is uh, which is what you want to aim for um, but if that doesn't make sense to you then then don't worry about it it's not it's not too much of a concern uh, and then finally you have the launch config. This is what I was talking to you guys about before. Now if we go back to our system here, you can see that on my card right now, which is not running an overclock, it is running at default. It is running on default stock settings and the card has been auto-tuned itself. It's still able to achieve 470 kilohashes per second. That's just on its own standard. But I'll show you what happens if we if we modify this for our system specifically. I'm going to run the, uh, the overclock that, that I always run on my system here. I have to um, add it in manually every time I restart the computer. Don't ever go past 1 200 on the GPU voltage. Um, the, these settings obviously are not um, the, the standard ones that everybody uses. I would strongly recommend not just flicking your card into these settings um, just like that because it can it can seriously damage your GPU if you don't know what your your GPU is able to handle. I do know what my my GPU is capable of, so I know that I can I can flick the the GPU boost right up. I can flick the memory clock right down like that, um, and I know that my computer is able to handle those settings. So I'm going to apply that to my card, and then I'm going to go over into our configuration file, which is just here and we're going to change this just slightly. So we've got H, which was our hash parallel is one, which is what we want. I, we're gonna change over to zero because I know that that card is not being used for anything else. And then my launch configuration, I'm actually going to run what this guy here has recommended, which is Z1224. Now for uh, argument's sake, the best thing to do um, if you go onto the back onto that thread again uh, into here the, this conversation thread there is uh, information about which letter you should be using for which card and I believe there might also be some information in that readme file as well if you can't figure it out do feel free to uh, to leave a message on the uh, on the video and I'll try and help you out as best I can but I do know that the Z 
um, also stands for T, uh, and the T is the uh, the Titan series graphics cards. So the seven series and the Titan cards all run on T, um, which is the same as running on Z. Actually, it is pretty obvious as well if you look in here because you can go through and you can see, right, so K series graphics cards, that's the 6 series. Uh, and then F, that's the Fermi cards. And we know the Fermi cards are the, are the 4 series. So it's it's pretty straightforward um, to, to find out you know what you should be running. But if I run this setup here, there are a couple of other things that we can do to, to modify it slightly. And I'll just talk to you guys about those really quickly before we finish off the video. Um, because obviously everybody wants to get the maximum they possibly can out of their graphics card. Texture cache um, is uh, another one that is probably quite useful to run. Um, I have found personally that uh, C tends to get the best out of what uh, what my card is able to run. Uh, 2 that is, C2, uh, sorry 1. Um, is is what I tend to run. Um, as you guys can see here, one uses a 1D cache, whereas two uses a 2D texture cache layout. Um, so, I mean, we'll, if we try running two, just for an example here, um, I'm going to save that file. You can look up uh, other sort of options here that you can play with. I mean, feel free to you know mess with these. The good thing is that obviously your your card itself is going to look after itself in terms of fan speed, um, and you know safeguards are built into your computer so that if you reach a certain temperature, it should shut off automatically. Um, but I really can't be held responsible for uh, for you blowing up your computer. So as long as we're clear, um, feel free to to go nuts and, and mess with that. So. If we go back into here and we go into our graphics card here, running the stress test.bat file that we've just changed, didn't run. Now this is this is something that happens to a couple of guys. It just sort of like does that and just comes up really quick and then that's it. Uh, it says JSON decode of two failed. Just had to do that quite a few times. Um, so that means that this is not compatible. So that's probably why I was running it in C1. I was trying to think, why did I use C1 rather than C2? Well, that doesn't work either. That's interesting. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change. Oh, actually, I, th I think I know what, why that's happening. It's probably because that's not a capital Z. Uh, but because I know that I'm running T for Titan, I'm going to change that over to a T just because I want to try to get this working for you guys as quickly as I can here. We'll take out the C command for now and resave that and try again. There we go. Right, so the, so the C command there was causing some problems with my system. Not quite sure exactly why that is. We'll have to look into that in more detail. Um, but uh, it's probably because I made a stupid typo or something. And that's what you guys need to bear in mind is that can happen uh, quite a lot. And I see people are commenting on my videos that they are having those sort of problems. If the, the thing just blinks up, try deleting a couple of commands. Then you can work out which one is not working very well. But as you guys can see today, I am running at least a 600 kilohashes. Uh, we've got a, a small one there, which obviously was accepted early. Um, we'll let it run to uh, for a little bit to so you, show you guys that I do have an average of 600 kilohashes per second. That's an average of 600 kilohashes per second with a soft overclock of 1046 megahertz with a lowered memory clock of 5000. And that's only due to the fact that we've upgraded the software. And that's it. So thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope this video has made things a little bit clearer for you. If you are still unsure, feel free to leave a comment on the video, um, and I'll try my best to help you out. If you feel like this video is a bit over your head, don't worry. There will be another video going out very shortly, which explains to you about QDA Manager and how that is a bit more straightforward and easier to use. Uh, so until next time, guys, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Take care. You've been watching the Gapcast. We hope you have enjoyed the show. Don't forget to check out all of our other videos. Oh, and be sure to subscribe to us if you like what you see. That way I'll know to make more and that you really like me. So, you've been watching the Gapcast. We hope you have enjoyed the show. Don't forget to check out all of our other videos.